Oh, right. As some of you um, have heard in the last Zoo Crew episode, I'm going to show you how I put together these Zoo Crew podcasts. And we're going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. All right, now when the Zoo Crew is actually uh, being recorded and uh, that sort of thing for the show, uh, this is my standard desktop layout. I have Mumble right over here, and uh, usually I'm in the studio room and everybody else is in the listening room. Obviously, this isn't happening right now because um, I couldn't actually record this while I was actually recording a show, so it didn't make very much sense to do that. And then over here, I have XChat IRC. All the information for connecting to us on the show, it will be in the show notes for those of you who have not checked it out. Uh, it is a lot of fun. Uh, we get to, It's a great way to interact and be a part of the show. And the nice thing about this is uh, myself and I'll have one other person make a recording. And under self, there is a record feature here, which will record all the uh, conversation and everything uh, in a specific room. In our case, it is the studio room when I'm in there. Right now, we've got the LDC radio in there right now, which is broadcasting uh, an audio show for the benefit of those who uh, come into our channel on, during off hours and want to uh, listen to something interesting. And then, of course, our ever-growing IRC chat room. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, once I have recorded my information and I have saved it to my hard drive, then I'm ready to start doing some editing with it. And I use Audacity for that. So let's go ahead and move over to our next screen here. And here it is. Okay, I already have our audio file open, but let's suppose I want to uh, put some additional audio into the file. Now, when you, um, let's say I want to go into my current folder where I keep some uh, About Us information. Voltam uh, has some information he always uh, wants me to include in the show. And let's say I want to uh, open that. Well, if I right click on this and select uh, Audacity, what's going to happen is it's going to give me an error saying that another copy of Audacity is running. So there is a way around this. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select File and then New here. And then File in the new window and then Open. Then I can go ahead and select the uh, file that I want to use. Okay, now with my new audio file open, all I have to do is double click on the audio because this, you know, from start to finish, this is the audio piece I want. And then I just simply select Edit, Copy. And then I know this is going to definitely go at the beginning. I'll just press one of the zoom buttons here, zoom in really close, and move the audio to the position where I want it. And in this case, I want it at the very beginning, and then edit, paste. Now, the good thing, the main thing that you want to do when you're focusing on editing your audio is you really want to listen to it. Let's say over time, uh, during a conversation, somebody blurbed a dirty word. I can actually highlight a piece of audio and then press the delete key on the keyboard and it will remove that audio out very simply, very easy, just as you saw right here. Also, as the audio is playing, you, <coughs> you will notice that there are gaps, little points of silence in the audio track. And this is something that is not really ideal when you have a, a group conversation going on. Sometimes you may have uh, somebody speaking you know, that is pausing quite often. You can see there are some big gaps right here. Okay, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the end sequence and then I'm going to show you how to correct the audio problems. So, let's just assume this is the second audio file. I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, uh, go into edit and then copy and then I'm going to put this at the end. Edit paste. 
Now we have a beginning audio and an ending audio. And let's just assume that we have already gone through and uh, checked out our audio and everything's working fine. Maybe we had one speaker that we could barely hear. So to correct this issue, we can actually highlight a piece of audio here and then we can go into effect and we can select to amplify it and then how many decibels you want that to be. Usually when I amplify something I will usually go with maybe 1.4. You can preview it and then press OK. You will notice now it has amplified that segment of audio for you. Okay, and I've already shown you how to delete the portions of audio and that sort of thing you don't want. Now, let's move our cursor to the end. You will see that this document is 52 minutes long. Well, we're going to remove all the audio gaps where there's silence and piece it all together so that the conversation just sounds like it's free-flowing and everything is going well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually select this icon so I can see the entire timeline here and then I'm going to double click and make sure that everything is selected. Or I can press Control A on my keyboard and it will select all of the audio. And then under Effect I am going to select if this comes up here, it looks like every because I'm on IRC, everybody's trying to message me here. Okay, now with everything selected, you're going to go into Effect, Truncate Silence, and what I usually do is uh, select a minimum silence duration of 10 and a maximum silence duration of 100, and these are in milliseconds, and then we will press OK. When this process finished, my audio clip went from 50 minutes down to 46 minutes 24 seconds. So it did take quite a bit of uh, time. That much time has been, uh, you know, just a little over four minutes of silence has been removed from this. So now when you play this audio back, the conversation will be freely freely flowing without too many gaps and silence and that sort of thing. And now it's just a matter of exporting it. And then you can just select File, Export, and then you can choose the format that you want. You can shoot. There are many formats you can choose from, but everybody suggested that I start using the AUG Vorbis files, so I have been using that. So you just simply select the uh, file format that you want and then press save. Once this saves out your file, a dialog will appear where you can uh, specify the author information, that sort of thing. And then once your file has been created, then you can follow one of my other video tutorials in my multimedia section on my channel where you can actually uh, take some graphics and you can apply this and make a video of it or if you're just doing podcasting and you just want to have some audio that you can put up on your blog you can host this as uh, as an OGG file in the web browser should be able to open those up. If you thought this was useful please put a comment in the space below. I will have more multimedia titles headed your way. I'm going to be doing some more tutorials in Blender. I finally completed my uh, 3D models and I'm going to be kicking out some really cool animations and that sort of thing with them. I've got some free time coming up to do that. Also, I'm going to be having a look at some other multimedia tiles that may be of interest to uh, all of my uh, Linux users out there who are considering multi Linux in multimedia. I have found that there are a lot of really great tools in Linux for multimedia and as many of you may or may not be aware, Hollywood films are made with Linux these days. So we're going to be taking a tour of a lot of multimedia tools that are available to you and uh, if there's any anything, any specific multimedia title you would like me to have a look at, please put that in the request section and uh, I will download that from the AUR and uh, I'll take a look at it. I'll play with it a little bit and if it's something that I think is going to be really useful for beginners to intermediates, I'll definitely put that up on the show. I'd like to thank all of you for watching and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.